So man, I'm so rusty when it comes to this. Like I said, man. So please forgive me, guys. This is this is me freestyling. Um, this is not gospel. This is just me trying my best to share my opinions on a subject matter I haven't studied in a long time. Um, a couple of years ago, when I was doing some research, I I was very interested in why so many people had sexual addiction, um, and I was very interested in why so many people were dealing with issues when it came to pornography and things along those lines and i was very ish interested in where why people had to go to like therapy i thought that was very odd like why do people have to go to therapy to, for this issue and why is it such a such a big deal to address um and so what ended up happening was i i, I ended up meeting a guy i believe his name was dr ted roberts freaking beast he he um, he wrote a book, I believe, called Sexy Christians. It's an oxymoronical word, but a great book. Um, so I was talking to Dr. Ted Roberts about this. And Dr. Ted Roberts, he, he counseled a lot of young men through addiction. He specialized in like high-end CEO, high-performing clients. And um, I was talking to him. I was like, I was like, Dr. Ted, you know, I'm, I'm a little confused. And I'm curious to hear your, your insight. Why is it? that so many people are struggling today to the need of like going to rehab and therapy and things along those lines and needing all these additional support. I, don't, I just don't see these systems being in place a thousand years ago and somehow human beings were able to, for my opinion, survive, thrive and become um, you know, successful and not have all these issues. And what he described to me, like I said, it's been such a long time, but what he described to me is the biggest difference between now and then was that today there is a, a, an atomic bomb got dropped on a whole generation of people. And this whole generation of people are inflicted by this radiation poisoning. And now this radiation poisoning is causing them to have so many medical issues that it, can, it takes the same type of technological innovation that created this atomic bomb to now create the, the solution for these issues. So it's kind of like looking at kids in Hiroshima who lived after the atomic bomb was dropped there and saying, why do they have all these weird arms and weird things growing out of their necks? And why do they have all these medical, like what's going on? Like this wasn't here a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand what took place. So what Dr. Ted Roberts suggested is that what went on in, in, the United, in, in the United States was that there was a natural process of sexualization um, that happened in the lives of men. Mm. And all of a sudden, all that was magnified a hundredfold through the sexual revolution. So... You know, people, some people like him, some people don't like him. He has a whole institute named after him. It's a guy named Alfred Kinsey. And, um, and, and I believe he created something called the Kinsey Report. Like I said, I'm all, all foggy here. I'm trying my best. And I believe it was released post-World War II, so 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. And the Kinsey Report, what the Kinsey Report did was it, it told the story of the sexual habits of the typical American um, adult. Um, and there was another book that was written called Sex and the Single Woman. And it talked about the sexual habits of the sex, about, about the, the typical American female adult. Kinsey was specifically with male. And what both of these studies really showed was how hypersexual both people were. So in Kinsey's studies, he would, he, I, I believe there was data where he said over one third of farm boys have sexual experiences with farm animals. Like this is how like crazy his his worldview happened, and so so this so just just for for clarity for everyone like listening and stuff, essentially and correct me if I'm wrong, but this guy wrote a book back in the early '50s saying, "Hey, I know you guys don't think this is normal, but like these guys are having experiences with animals and and all this other kinds of stuff," and he kind of over, I guess over exaggerated how sexual people were and yeah. that's what you're explaining yeah so one of the one of the 
feedbacks was that uh, one of the pushbacks to Kinsey's study was he did it in the he did it mainly in the 1940s when a lot of American males were at war. So it wasn't even the best sample size of individuals that he was that he was peeking from. But yeah, so we created these studies that really describe very hypersexual behavior going on with American men, which kind of pushed this idea of, okay, maybe the sexuality of young guys aren't as taboo. And in the book, Sex and a Single Woman, what the author of that book, she did, was she talked about this hypersexualization of women. And in her book, what she really described was like things where how women today have experiences with married men and all these other things. And, and, and some, a lot of what she taught about in her book is a lot of the, 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 the foundational ideologies which created Cosmopolitan magazine. I believe she may have been one of the co-founders, but I could be wrong with that. Mm. So all these things really changed the trajectory of how sex was being taught in schools. The mm. same way a lot of things when it comes to, you know, rainbow ide ide ideology changes the way gender is being taught in schools. These, the Kinsey, Kinsey studies and so much more that took place in the 50s and 60s, which really started the sexual revolution, it changed the way we understood sex and sexuality and what's permissible. So you started seeing more edgier things in movies. You started seeing more edgier things in TV shows. You started seeing the, 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 the removal of, of cens censorship. So yeah, so the, 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 the fundamental challenge now is that with, with all these innovations, what has now occurred is now you have these 12-year-old boys who open their computer and they see things that men have never seen for thousands of years. Mm. They, they, like, a man can see 100 women today in 30 minutes if he wanted to. 100 naked women in 30 minutes. Right, true. So, there, so with, going back to Dr. Ted Roberts' story, how can a 12-year-old boy Probably and his, an unformed brain go online, see this? Like, think about it. Before, how often could you see people having sex? You have to be some kind of a creepy peeping Tom. <laughs> yeah. Cash people while having sex. Even the idea of, like, there wasn't, there wasn't no, you know, bedroom lights. Right. Back in the day, at, at, when the sun set, you went to sleep. Right. If you had your candle watching, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so these things are not natural. This and is not a natural occurrence. And, and then how often, even, even not even having sex, but how often did the average man, like if we take it back to like, I don't know, 300, 400 years ago, how often did the average man even see a naked woman? A hundred percent. And that's one of the things that he talked about. So, so you have this 12-year-old boy. What, he goes on the computer. All of a sudden, you know, he sees 100 naked women. What's going on with his brain? His development. Right. But then right. all of a sudden, he's 18 years old. He's at church, and the pastor's telling him to stop watching porn. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Right. 